Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about holiday driving, answering your questions about passing a road test, and we're going to talk about four years on YouTube and the founding story of Smart Drive Test. So stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about driving, passing your road test, being a safer and smarter driver, and as well, four years on YouTube because now we're four years. I find it hard to believe that it's been four years. It's just incredible. So anyway, we'll start off with a little bit of a humor story. Uh, I was uh, texting a friend of mine and I said, uh, you can come to our house for Christmas. And instead of it being our house for Christmas, it uh, the, the auto corrected to outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so you can come to Outhouse for Christmas. <laughs> so that was that was the funny that I just had with uh, texting people. Excellent, Jaden passed his road test. That is awesome. And hello everyone. Carrie's here from Minnesota. Uh, inexperienced opinion. Hi Rick. Wanted to let you know I passed my road test for the first time. That is awesome. Nathan is here. Uh, Gamal is here. Uh, Adler is here. Excellent. Lots of people is here. JFSA 380 as well. Uh, so let us know where you're tuning in from, what class of license you're going for. And I'm not going to do a PowerPoint presentation today. I'm just going to talk about the holidays and be really happy that it's, you know, only three or four days to Christmas, which is awesome. Happy holidays. Nabelle, I got G license in first attempt coming from another country with experience. Left hand side driving. Nabelle, which, uh, which country are you in that they drive on the left side of the road that you came from and then you got your license in Ontario? That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations. Uh, I'm pretty excited about Christmas this year. As some of you know, and this is what I'm going to talk about in terms of the founding story of Smart Drive Test and how I got started on this uh, four years ago. Seriously, started on it four years ago. If you look at when my channel was founded, it says earlier than that. I'm not sure exactly what happened. So, uh, yeah, it was four years ago, almost to the day, and thus the thumbnail for the live stream today. Top 10, tips, uh, <laughs> top 10 tips to pass your road test and the reason for that thumb is because that was one of the first videos that I made and I'll just uh, so Nabel so Pakistan I see I did not know that Nabel I did not know that Pakistan drove on the left side of the road that's really great information film on Corey is here bricks for wheels and Corey is an excellent excellent moderator he gets up videos that I suggest for you to have a look at uh, when you ask me questions as well. Corey is really good at keeping the bad people out. Awesome. Uh, Naz had my license for almost a year. No crashes. That is awesome, Naz. Have you had any close calls, Naz? Uh, okay. Uh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Happy holidays. Uh, Adler. I just passed my permit test for uh, four days ago. And now practice my road test. Need to know everything. Awesome. So Adler, any questions you have, we can certainly help you with that. And Bali, class five test in 10 days. Awesome. The inexperienced opinion. Yes, I do have tips for dealing with tailgaters. The, the interesting part about dealing with tailgaters, and as well, Corey, I'll put the video up for you on uh, rear ending so you prevent getting rear-ended. One of the things you need to do when you're being tailgated by other drivers is increase the space in front of you because you now need to drive for yourself and you need to drive for the, the goofball who's tailgating you because uh, essentially the person who's tailgating you now has given up their autonomy, their ability to drive their vehicle. They're now hoping and praying that they react fast enough when you make a move or a maneuver that they're gonna be able to do that. So you need to just increase the space in front so you don't have emergency stops, you don't have emergency acceleration, stuff like that. So that's what you do when you have tailgaters. Simply increase the space in front of you, more vigilant observation and less aggressive technique. So if you're gonna brake and somebody's tailgating you, tap the brake uh, pedal and that'll flash the brake lights a couple of times and indicate to the person that you could be too close. Uh, the other thing with tailgaters is just slow down a little bit and oftentimes they'll get around you, they'll pass you or whatnot and get out of the way. Uh, Adler, how much do you pay for road tests? Where are you that you're gonna uh, go for a road test, Adler? 
Adler's in Massachusetts. Uh, so does anybody know what the cost of the road test is in Massachusetts? I don't know off the top of my head. I know that for the purposes of most places, in my experience, I think it's about $50. Uh, not sure. But it's, it's weird the way they do it because there's, there's a cost for taking the road test. It's $50 and then if you pass your license, then it's another fee for issuing your license. There's another fee for, <laughs> there's a bunch of different fees the way that they do it, which kind of really ticks you off when you go to get your license. I know for most people, uh, when you go to get your license and you pass your road test, you're success, uh, successful in issuing your license, it's usually somewhere between $80 and $120 uh, all told. So NAS says it's $32 there in North Carolina, so I suspect it's probably similar uh, there in Massachusetts. Uh, per, per, uh, Patricia is in Bellevue, Idaho. Welcome from Idaho, that's awesome. Uh, Jaden, uh, me and my dad are having a problem finding a new car for me, so I do not know what to do. I've been to uh, a dealership, uh, good things. He's calling up a buddy to get me a new car. So Jaden, are you looking for a new car or are you looking for a used car? Just let me know that. Okay. Uh, Nabel, uh, thank you, sir. I watched your videos to learn a lot about uh, aspects. Excellent. Okay. Naz had a close call on my first day outside a bar. Suspected drunk driver escaped with no crashes. That's awesome. Emma, hey, joining for the first time, but always watched your videos. Helped me a lot to pass my computer test, uh, which is your learners. And now I need to do my road test. Please encourage me. It is my first time driving in the snow. Emma, excellent. And Corey got a video up for you there, Emma, on how to drive, how to learn to drive in the winter snow and ice. And that will really help you out as well, Emma. Uh, yeah, and, and feel free to ask questions. I do the best I can to get to the comments and help people out. Uh, Gamel, I take my Washington State road test in about two months and have become pretty comfortable with every typical environment, residential, cities, freeways, et cetera. Uh, what skills should I practice before the test? Uh, Gamal, one of the things that I rec that I counsel uh, drivers who are practicing for the road test to do is to go back and revisit the fundamentals. And Corey will put the video up for you on how to learn to drive. And basically go and get some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons. And not just for Gamal, but for everybody who's practicing uh, in preparation for the road test, go back and revisit the fundamentals. Those things that you learned right away at the beginning of learning how to drive. And even if you haven't done the parking lot work yet, go and do that. Go and get some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons or the short witch's hat, whichever you can get a hold of. And go to the parking lot, do the slow speed maneuvers, do the forward figure eights around the pylons and then do the reverse figure eights around the pylons. That will teach you mastery of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the throttle and the brake. And the throttle is also called the gas pedal or the accelerator. It will teach you to work those things in combination and give you a higher uh, mastery of those as well. It will also teach you where your vehicle is in space and place. And those are critical skills, not just for passing a road test, but for your career of driving and for you to remain safe and be a good, safe, smarter driver on the roadway. So I really encourage you, if you've been training for a while and you feel fairly comfortable with all of that, you're parking, uh, driving on residential streets, out on highways, on freeways, interstates, those types of things, then go back and revisit the fundamentals. And that will really help you out and really get you prepared uh, for going and uh, taking your road test and really solidify mastery of the primary controls and knowing where your vehicle is in space and place. That will really help you out. Okay, Patricia, you really helped me with air brake study. Thank you, I passed my air brake test on Friday. Congratulations, Patricia, so glad that we could help you out with that. And I'm gonna start revisiting some of that air brake stuff in the spring. There's some of the videos that I wanna redo because I think I can do a better job of explaining some of the stuff to you, but congratulations on passing your uh, air brakes. And Patricia, where are you going to get your CDL license? Which state are, or where are you in the world? Hola, uh, I'll just call you Maxwell. It's a little easier for me. Uh, season's greetings from Stockholm, Sweden. Thanks for impacting knowledge every time. And thank you so much for dropping in and leaving a comment. That's great. Stockholm, and I just had a student over on the Facebook page from Romania uh, pass a road test after failing three times. So that was really awesome news. Really great news for the holidays. And I do owe an apology to some of the smart drivers. 
Uh, Marcus passed his road test yesterday. Marcus was unsuccessful the first time, and then he took the Pass Your Road Test First Time course over at the Smart Drive Test website, signed up for that. Uh, he did do, uh, he, actually Marcus is in Vernon here, and he went out with one of the driving schools here and did a, a mock road test. And then on Friday, Marcus was successful in getting his road, his getting his license. So congratulations to Marcus. And I do apologize. <laughs> I misled some smart drivers. Uh, I just threw up a stock photo when I put up the comment about Marcus passing his road test there on the community feed. Uh, and uh, I do apologize about that. Uh, as soon as I realized my error, <laughs> I. I went back and asked Marcus to send me a picture, so now there's a picture of Marcus up there with the comment that he had passed his road test on Friday. So that's what happened. Gamal, thanks Rick, I could use some work on slow speed maneuvers anyway. Uh, your videos have been a great help with your uh, trickier maneuvers. Excellent. And Gamal, uh, make sure that uh, you do the forward figure eights and then do the reverse figure eights. And make sure you laugh a lot while you're doing that because it's important to have good fun with that because uh, I know that that can be fairly challenging. Uh, for new drivers who are learning how to drive to do those reverse figure eights around the pylon. So that's really great. Adler, uh, when taking a road test, will you be accepted to know all the, uh, expected to know all of the controls of the car? Uh, Adler, you're not expected to know all of the secondary controls of the car. However, for the purposes of a road test, and take note for anybody who's preparing for a road test, especially in inclement weather and in the fall and winter time, at minimum, minimum be able to turn the windshield wipers on while you're driving without looking at them and be able to turn on the the window defrost okay at minimum you have to be able to do those two things because if you can't do those two things it's unlikely you're going to pass a road test because what that says to the examiner is that you haven't done enough driving because you can't turn on those two Minima those two secondary controls which are an app which are critical in inclement weather if your windows fog up You have to be able to turn on the defrost to be able to clear the wind the windscreen and You need to turn on the windshield wipers if it starts to rain or if you're in the winter time And you get some gunk on your windshield and you need to clear it off You need to be able to use the washer fluid and the windshield wipers to clean off the uh, windshield so at minimum the defrost and windshield wipers. The rest of it, you should be okay. Uh, you know, you know. The other thing is, is that you want to look at uh, look at the video on secondary controls. Corey, I'll put that up for you. And as well, uh, one other video that I just had a brain cramp and it went away. <laughs> It'll. I'll come back to it in just a moment. Okay, Patricia, I'm a diesel roller operator for a assault company. <laughs> uh, I don't know what an assault company is, Patricia. Oh, okay. Also, so you're in the military. Okay, there we go. Emma, how do I sign up for the online road test? Just passed. Uh, just talked. You just talked about. Okay, Emma. So you're in luck. The past road test first time course is on special right now. It's twenty seven dollars. Uh, Corey will put up the link for you that uh, over at the uh, Smart Drive Test website. There, you can sign up for that. All right. Uh, Patricia, I work at the Idaho Material and Construction in Bellevue, Idaho. After I got my permit, uh, they teach the rest of the information. There you go. Okay, so that <laughs> that's all coming together. It kind of fell down in two comments there. Now, if you leave a comment or ask a question, it's, it's fairly busy here. Uh, just remind me to go and have a look at it or just retype it again, and then that way I'll get back at it. Oh, Patricia, so it's not a salt company. It's asphalt. <laughs> See, you had a typo too, like me, uh, come to our house, not come, come to the outhouse. <laughs> That's good fun. Okay, uh, Brian, also remember that you can get out and look. Yes, goal. Uh, when backing, there is a set number of times that you can do that, but they uh, pull forward one time. Also pay attention to road signs, especially truck information, such as uh, no parking, truck routes, uh, limits, all that. They will ask you. Uh, what was the last two signs that you passed? Oh, Brian, you had a really good instructor. Because <laughs> I used to do that uh, to students who I was teaching truck and bus driver training to. I would say to them as we passed a road sign, what was the last road sign you saw? And, you know, it's a real st struggle for drivers to be able to do that, to be able to tell you what it was. And, and probably uh, one of the things you know, that sticks out in my mind is I had a guy that I was training. Actually, I was mentoring him. He just got his license out of truck driving school and we went out on a run 
And I asked him three or four, half a dozen times, what was the last road, time, road sign you saw? And I tried to explain to him how important it was to have road signs and to read the road signs, especially for truck and bus drivers. It is critical that you read the road signs and take that information on board. And finally, I just said to him, I said, you know, I asked him what the road sign was. He says, I don't know. And I said to him, I just pulled the truck over, like right now, pull the truck over. And I got him out of the truck and I made him walk back and look at the road sign because he just was not getting it. Like it was not registering with him that he had to take note of the road signs. And the other thing I would suggest for uh, bus and truck drivers, people who are uh, upgrading their license to a CDL licensed truck or bus, uh, Corey will put the video up for you on top 11 road signs for CDL drivers. Uh, have a look at that because there's different signs that you now have to pay attention to as a CDL drivers and some of them can actually save your life. So have a look at those. Uh, Carrie, in your top 10's videos you talk about hazard perception catalog and the first tip, what would you consider are the most important hazards to have your hazard perception catalog? The first and foremost, Carrie, that's an excellent question that you just asked about hazard perception. The first one, Carrie, is to identify intersections. Where are you going to intersect with other road users? And it's not just uh, at conventional, what we think of where two roads meet, right? That's not, that's the most common definition of an intersection, but there's also a crosswalk is an intersection because you are intersecting with pedestrians. So crosswalks, uh, when you have laneways coming out from say a drive, a, a restaurant that has a drive through, you're intersecting with other vehicles and other road users. When you come out of a pro of a mall, for example, and there's a sidewalk, uh, there's going to be pedestrians walking along the sidewalk. That's an intersection. So in terms of hazard perception, what are the intersections that I am crossing where I could potentially have conflict with other road users? And first and foremost, and I need to make a video on this because this is an excellent topic and that was an, such an excellent question, Kerry, about intersections. And for new drivers, you need to be able to identify what the intersections are and then determine what are the potential hazards at those intersections, the places where you intersect with other road users on the roadway. And those can be different places. So if you can do that, uh, it's really gonna help you out uh, in terms of hazard perception uh, on the roadway and really work, you know, go a long way to keeping you safe on the roadway. So that's one of the things you can do. Uh, Nicole, I'm in my 30s and I don't have my driver's license yet. Do you have any advice for me? Now it is a must have for me, but it looks uh, so far for me to have it. Yes, so Nicole, uh, just start at the beginning. Give yourself, you know, plan out a schedule. And actually, if you look at the Pass Your Road Test First Time course, uh, I have a schedule in there. It's like a, it's an eight-week schedule. <coughs> Excuse me. It's an eight-week schedule, and it'll take you through all the topics uh, that you need to cover in terms of being fully prepared for a road test. And I would encourage you to do that. Patricia, all the best. Take care. Uh, thanks for dropping by and leaving a comment. That's awesome. So, Nicole, do that. I would, I would encourage you to do that. And it doesn't matter that you're in your 30s. You can certainly get your license. You can certainly do the work that you need to do. Uh, you might even consider having a couple of lessons with uh, a driving instructor, but I would strongly encourage you to go over and sign up for the course and you, everything there is what you need to do in the, in the outline of uh, six to eight weeks of, of, of preparing for a road test. Uh, Prince, I've been driving for a year so far and I still struggle to change lanes when lots of cars are around, especially on the 401 through Toronto, when some of the cars are going 140 plus, yes. Uh, that can be difficult and uh, Definitely, Prince, one of the things I suggest is, is that, especially after you get your license, is for you to keep up with the traffic flow. It just makes you much, much more predictable on the roadway. And as you know, on the 401, you know, you start getting out into that far left lane, and as you said, they're doing 140 kilometers an hour. You need to be doing at least that if you're going to merge out into that lane. You don't want to be pulling in front of other drivers who are, you know, accelerating and doing crazy amounts of speeds and those types of things. So take your time, uh, again, have Corey will put the video up on, uh, Corey's already put the video up, he's got ahead of me here, which is great. Uh, how to change lanes, have a look at that, especially uh, 
prints at the end of the video if you go near the end of the video I go out on the highway and do some lane changes out there so uh, do that as well have a look at that and then come back if you have any questions at all leave us a comment Hawaii, good topic today. Excellent. Drive Smart BBC. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well, Tim. Thank you so much for dropping by and leaving us a comment. It's a great time of year. Great holidays. Yes, <laughs> I know that it's a little crowded in the shopping malls. Uh, I've been to the shopping malls and yes, indeed, it is a little bit crowded. Uh, but, you know, just say to yourself when you go to the shopping mall, I got to park at the back in the parking lot that's three blocks away. Okay. If you come to that realization that you cannot park near the door or at least it's very unlikely that you've got to park near the door <laughs> then you're gonna have a lot less stress when you go to the mall because I've been to the mall and you gotta park a ways away so there you go Brian nice cup yes spider-man spider-man and I always do the live stream every week that's my little signature thing there you go so Corey's put up uh, the passion road test first time over at the smart drive test website awesome as well both the winter driving smart and the defensive driving course are both over there they're both also on sale have a look at those as well uh, if you're having some issues with driving and that sort of thing all right so let's talk a little bit about four years on youtube and what four years of you on youtube has looked like um i am i am not one of those uh, <laughs> uh i'm not one of those superstars on youtube i did not go from like zero to a hundred thousand people in one year I know there are people out there who have done that people who have been successful in doing that uh, I did not do that I had to work three years before I got to a hundred thousand subscribers and, and last year this was the year that I got my silver play button which is up here behind me up in the corner somewhere where no I'm not pointing the right way over there <laughs> I'll just turn around and look and then that way I can point to it so this year I got my silver play button so it's been a really great three years uh, I I'm a little, I'm a, not, you know, the first two years on YouTube, I worked really, really hard. I put up a lot of videos. Uh, this year, I didn't do as much work as I should have. And I'm, you know, rethinking everything that I've been doing on YouTube and stuff I put in on social media and those types of things. I've been a little, I I, I, I haven't been maintaining the, the, web, the, the YouTube channel as much as I should have this year. I'll just say that, okay? I'm not going to say anything further because I'm going to try and correct the problem. The, not correct the problem, but I'm going to try and do better, right? So I'm reconceptualizing what I'm going to do. So I'm sort of looking back on four years. So what So what happened five years ago, I went through a divorce. Uh, as many of you know, I have two kids. At the time of the divorce, they were three and five years old. Uh, she took them with her and took them away from me, which was really, really challenging for me and very difficult for me because in the five years that I was with my kids, I was never away from them for more than a day or two at most. So I spent a lot of time with my kids. And so when, when my ex-wife took the kids away from me, that was very devastating for me. That was incredibly hard. Not to mention I was working at the truck driving school here in town at the time. And that summer, I think there was one week that I got like four hours. So my job really went downhill at the time. And if you look over here on the uh, YouTube website or on my website uh, just bear with me for one sec and I will get the right there we go okay just transition over there you can see this log sheet here and uh, so the plan was uh, in 2015 in the fall of 2015 I finally came up with a plan to try and you know <laughs> reboot my life so to speak uh, the plan was, is I was going to go back driving truck. I was going to drive truck for 10 months, running long haul, uh, and I was going to make enough money to go back to university. I was going to go and get my teaching degree, and I was going to pursue uh, a career as a teacher. So that was the goal. And uh, so I told the truck driving school that I was going to quit. I was going to go off and drive truck, and I wasn't going to come back. Well, the owner came and talked to me and convinced me to come back. And you can, and so... <laughs> Uh, it wasn't very good because I called the guy that owned the truck and I said, listen, I'm giving you my two weeks notice. I hadn't even got in the truck yet. So I went off and drove truck and you can see here I'm driving between Vancouver and Edmonton here in Western Canada. So I did that in October uh, for two weeks and then I came back. I went back to the driving school for a period of time and uh, worked there and I started doing videos. Okay, uh, main camera, here we go. 
transition. I'm just having a little technical problem here. So, bear with me. There, there we go. Okay, so, went back to the driving school and just while I was driving truck, one of the things that I did when I was driving truck was I went and I looked at audiobooks or listened to audiobooks while I was driving truck. So I went to the library and I picked up a bunch of audiobooks and they were all fiction. And I was feeling kind of guilty about the fact that they were all fiction. So I pulled one of the nonfiction books off the shelf and I didn't even look at the title or the cover or whatever it was about. I just remember it was purple. That's all I remember. And I thought to myself, well, if I don't listen to it, I can just bring it back. I can just not listen to it. So it laid on the floor of the truck for about 10 days. And then finally I looked down, I saw it there and I'm like, okay, I'll, th I'll throw that in and I listened to it. And it turned out it was Robert Kiyosaki. And some of you may or may not know Robert Kiyosaki is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he has a very successful international business. Rich Dad, Poor Dad has a game, board games, you know, numerous books he's written. And he's been incredibly su successful. He's one of the top uh, financial advisors in the world. And I listened to this book and it wasn't Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was uh, Increasing Financial Intelligence by Robert Kiyosaki. And he said to me, he, he said in the book, he said, you need to build an asset. And I'm like, what is an asset? And he said, an asset is something that will make you money even when you're not there. And he started talking about businesses and those types of things. And he says, you know, if you have a business that you have to show up to every day or it won't continue, that's not a business. He said, you're self-employed. You know, and I'm struggling with this and I'm thinking, you know, what is an asset? What can I do? What can I build? And so I came back after the two weeks off truck, I went back to the driving school, I was working there and I started doing the videos, right? And I was struggling with social media. Social media can be overwhelming for anybody who's done any sort of social media. You know, you got Facebook and you got Twitter and Instagram and <laughs> YouTube and TikTok and all of these social media platforms. And you're just, you, if you're trying to do all of them, you're not gonna do any of them. And so I came off the road, I started, doing, I started playing with a little bit of video. I had been doing a little bit of it before, but I didn't really know anything about online video. And I'd had the Smart Drive Test website on the back burner for a long time. I created that in like 2011 uh, with my good friend, Tim Davis, uh, who runs basic Joomla tutorials. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and helps people out to build websites and whatnot. And I came back to the website. I was struggling with this, the social media. And I think it was November, I came across James, James Wedmore, who, who's built a, a very successful YouTube channel. He's, he's built an incredibly successful online business. And he said, you need to build a YouTube channel. And I started making videos. And this video, as I talked to you about in the thumbnail, uh, this video here, top 10 tips to pass your road test first time, which you can't see right now because I haven't changed it over. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this video here, top 10 tips to pass your road test first time, this video I made on the 27th of December, or I put it up on the 27th of December, 2015. So that's almost four years to the date. And this video now has almost 900,000 views, 894,000 views. So, it, and it's the fourth most popular video on my channel. It's the next video that's gonna go over a million views on my channel. Uh, so it's been incredibly successful. It's been a good video. And I remember this video because I was struggling with, <laughs> you know, getting my videos noticed because the first nine months there were there was essentially crickets. Uh, in May of 2016, the on my birthday, I remember, uh, you know, begging people for two subscribers because I was at 98 subscribers, and I remember begging people to say to me to to subscribe to my channel so I could get to 100 100 subscribers for my birthday. <laughs> which was pretty funny. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I committed to two videos a week. I was making two videos a week and there was so much to learn. If any of you have done YouTube, have tried to make videos, have tried to put videos up on the YouTube channel, it is an incredible amount of work. Uh, learning the YouTube platform, learning how to make videos, how to do audio, how to shoot videos. All, and I didn't know anything about video, right? And I was under the, the misconception that, you know, oh, this was gonna be fairly easy because I lectured at universities. I got, a, I got a doctorate, I taught at the universities. And I thought, well, how hard can this be? But, you know, it took me literally almost two years before I developed my on-camera persona. You, you know, and, and there's, there's some funny videos and I'll, I'll dig them up and maybe put them up on the, uh, 
community channel for you. But there's there's a video with me uh, with one arm down at my side because I'm trying to figure out what to do with my hands. And my good friend Tim says to me, <laughs> he's, I said, what do you think of this video? And he looks at it and he goes, you look like a stroke victim. <laughs> because I was only moving one arm <laughs> for the video. You know, so it, it took some time. And some of my first videos are not very good. I mean, you look at that video on top 10 tips and I, I look very... I look, I look constipated. <laughs> there's, there's no comfort on camera. So, you know, if any of you are thinking about building an online channel and doing online video, you know, just go with it. Because later, in, you know, when you, when you get good at it, you can start to make fun of your, you know, have a good laugh about the whole thing, right? Uh, you know, and all of the experts, you know, Sean Cannell, video influencers, Nick Nim and all of the rest of them, they will all tell you your your first videos are your worst videos, right? And uh, so, you know, there you go with all of that. So that was kind of the fall and I started making videos and I started doing that. And then in September of 2016, uh, I was watching the, 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 the statistics on YouTube and for anybody who's done YouTube, it's not views, it's not how many subscribers you have, it's watch time. Watch time is what matters on YouTube. So in September of 2016, uh, I got two minutes of watch time, two days of watch time, which meant that for every minute of the day, uh, people were watching one minute of my videos. Or, yeah. And I thought, okay, this thing's finally on. It's it, People are now watching this. And it's from September till about November, I made one video a day, six days a week, which I wouldn't, I would not recommend for anybody to do. <laughs> it's an incredible amount of work. I was working from like five o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night making videos, and you know it was an old computer. It didn't work very well. It's not like the setup that I have now, which is like a, a you know, everything runs super fast. Uh, and uh, so my goal was from September to, at Christmas to have ten days of watch time at Christmas. Uh, I hit 10 days of watch time in like to October and by Christmas I hit 20 days of watch time. Now I'm averaging somewhere between, uh, you know, 70 and 100 days every day, like 15, 100, 1500 hours of watch time a day. I'm, I'm, the channel is doing incredibly well. But I want the channel to do better. I think that we can help more people and I'm going to do a couple of international trips coming up. Uh, my, my goal next year, I have a I have a very lofty goal next year. I want to 10 times the channel. That's that's my goal. So it's it's a big goal. So that's essentially the founding story of of the YouTube channel and how Smart Drive Test got started. And of course, you know, there you know, it's a business. The Smart Drive Test is a successful business. I make my living off Smart Drive Test. So it's been very successful. Uh, I've helped a lot of people pass the road test, CDL licenses, motorcycles, trucks, buses, all of that stuff. I've helped people. So, uh, you know, you can do it. And the, the message, just to kind of come back to what the message of all of this is about my founding story. Yes, five years ago, my, my life was pretty dim. Uh, I was, you know, my mom said to me at one point after the, the marriage broke down, I lost my job. I got two babies because I, I was a single dad. I had two little babies. I had a three-year-old and a five-year-old to look after. And, you know, I just, it, it was hard. And, but the best advice I ever got about being down was from my mom. She says, 10 minutes at a time. 10 minutes at a time. Do 10 minutes, get through the next 10 minutes. 10 minutes, get through the ten, next 10 minutes. And that that's how I made it. I just, you know, one 10 minute chunk of time. And, a, 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 you know, that's what sometimes, sometimes your life is so hard and so challenging and you're so, you cannot see anything beyond your arm's reach that that's what you got to do is 10 minutes at a time and you can do it. But at one and the same time, the YouTube channel kept me from going crazy because I had lots of work to do. So I wasn't sitting around either. I was, I was doing a lot of work and it's really great. And so the point that I want to make about all of this is that, yes, it's kind of, you know, uh, the phoenix metaphor, out of the ashes rise the phoenix, right? But this isn't the first time that I've done this in my life. I, you know, and it, I think it was Carrie that asked me a couple of weeks ago, you know, on the wall here behind me, you know, what is my greatest achievement? I think one of my greatest achievements was getting my doctorate because I was the kid that was never supposed to get a doctorate. Uh, I grew up blue collar. My dad was a welder. Uh, he was a bit of a drunk. It was a bit of an abusive, so you know, I left home when I was 16. I worked on jobs and those kinds of things, 
hadn't even finished high school. Uh, you know, I didn't even have a grade 10 education. I went back to high school, got my high school degree, went on to university, but pff, university was like, you know, I didn't have anybody mentoring me and I mistakenly took sciences. I failed calculus three times in university and realized that maybe science isn't the thing that I should be taking in university. And then I dropped out of university. I came back to university finally finished my degree and in the last year that I was there I found history, loved history, uh, applied for a graduate degree, went off to uh, Mel went off to the University of Melbourne in Australia, graduated with my degree, uh, my doctor degree. I had no idea how I was going to do that. I married an Australian, I went, I, we moved back to Australia, she wanted to be back near her family, got enrolled in the University of Melbourne and I was like how am I going to afford going to the University of Melbourne? And you know something when you when you when you start to move forward in life, and you just you see a goal, you set a goal, your brain starts to work on how am I going to do that? How am I going to figure that out? And if you want to do something in life, and you want to do something really great with your life, just figure out what you want to do and go for it. The universe will help you figure out how to get there, because I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> in 2002, when I bought a plane ticket and I flew to Australia, I had no idea how the heck in the world I was going to figure out how to do a doctorate degree because, uh, as some of you may or may not know, uh, I was an international student and the international students pay three times uh, the tuition fee that domestic students pay. So somehow I had to figure out <laughs> how I was going to afford this. Well, it turned out that once I got my uh, permanent residency in Australia, the Australian government paid for my degree. I only had to pay a $300 administration fee to the university every year. I mean, I still had to work and, and live and those types of things, but the Australian government paid for me to go to university and get my doctorate. I mean, how magic is that? <laughs> how magic is that? It's, you know, and I, and I see people on YouTube all the time and they're complaining about YouTube and what YouTube is doing and they're taking away this or they're taking away that. Yeah, there's, there's a kind of a downside of YouTube. It's a huge corporation. But at one and the same time, there are, you know, thousands of people who are making incredible businesses on YouTube with a cell phone. They're using a cell phone as a camera to make online videos and, 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 and they're building incredibly successful businesses, six figures, seven figures a year uh, and more. So YouTube, if you, if, you know, and, and coming back to what I was talking to you about when I in, in, 20, in October 2016, when I went back driving truck, go, going back and driving truck, long haul, that was the low point of my life. That was the absolute low point of my life because I did not want to go back driving truck, especially long haul with two little babies at home. When I had kids, the only thing I ever wanted to do was be a dad and, and being away for a week at a time in a truck was not, it was not in my plan. So when I climbed back in that truck, my life had gone to an all-time low because I, I, as soon as I got back, I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? But I had to be there for a reason because that's where I found the book. That's where I found what build an asset. What is an asset? You know, and it's like he said, you know, it's, you know, you know, the opportunity shows up with a toolkit and a set of overalls and goes, here you go. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a heap of work to build a YouTube channel. I'm not, I would, I would never say to you in any stretch of the imagination, it's easy. But YouTube is an asset. It is an asset. It is something that builds, that sends me money every month and I don't have to be there all the time. Yes, there's a lot of work involved, answering comments and questions and those types of things if you want to maintain the channel, but I can still go away for a couple of days and YouTube will say, uh, Google sends me a check every month. Not to mention my, my Smart Drive Test website also makes money. This is an asset. This is something that makes me money. And if you can do that, if you're 20 years old and you're building an asset in your life, oh my God, you are going to be, you're going to be retired by the time you're 55 because you can make an incredible business on YouTube. And just Sean Cannell is one of my heroes on YouTube. And he is one of the people that I follow religiously. If you want to see somebody who's been incredibly successful, somebody who has an incredible story on YouTube, go and watch some of Sean Cannell stuff. I just, I cannot say enough good things about Sean Cannell. He's, a, he's an incredible person. He's an incredibly giving person. Uh, he's highly motivated. He puts out incredible content. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at because of Sean Cannell, video influencers. Uh, and um, 
his partner's name is is escaping me for just a moment here, but I'll it'll come back to me in just a moment here. But have a look at that stuff. Okay, so we'll go back and answer some questions here. Uh, Mad Trucker, I did that, but I made a series. Also, congratulations on your channel. Thank you so much. Uh, Victor, I just wanted to thank you. All your videos helped me upgrade my driver's license from a class five to an advanced five in Alberta. It helped me get a better job. Thank you so much. You are most welcome, Victor. Congratulations on that. Frederick, uh, your channel is like this to me. Improvement equals growth. That's why I keep coming back. There's always something good and inspiring. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Frederick. That is awesome, awesome uh, compliment there. And, and that's really what I want the Smart Drive Test channel to be about. That was exactly what I wanted it to be about when I started the channel. It was about empowerment. I wanted all of the videos that I do to be about empowerment. I want them to be about teaching people how to pass a road test, how to be a good driver, and how to move forward in their life. And I am, that's another direction that I see the channel now going is some of the inspirational, educational stuff, because driving is, a, is really a metaphor for a lot of other things in life that we do, right? Uh, you know, because you can take all of those skills uh, that you applied to learning how to drive and pass a road test and be successful in you know not crashing a car and you can apply them to other things in life those skills of learning something learning maneuvers skills all of that can be applied to something else and you know in this time of the year of the holidays I know it's not happy for everybody but for most people it's a very happy time of the year it's a happy time of giving and those types of things it's the same thing with learning how to drive you know it's a magic time you're learning a new skill and the ability to learn is going to be one of the constants in your life because no matter what you do you're always going to be learning something and I'll tell you right now my own experience I've been around I realized the other day that I have been around computers <laughs> since computers started in 1988 when I went to university I worked in the, I got a job in the computer lab in the old days of uh, you know word perfect and dot matrix compute uh, printers dot matrix printers and you know everything was keyboards there was no mouse right this is <laughs> mice came along later we didn't have computer mouses is it mouses what's the plural of computer mouse is it mice or mouse <laughs> but anyway you know I started in that and so I was at the beginning of the computer revolution now the things that we can do on computers I mean I can sit here by myself in my house in my studio with my lights and my thing and I can live stream to the world it's absolutely incredible it is so magic and it's the things that I try to tell my kids I try and tell my kids everything you say everything you think is real and it truly is it's you know the world is a magic place the world is incredible and you know if you think certain things if you if you shoot for the stars you can get there you can get there think of it like this if you take an axe and you go into the forest and you find the biggest tree you can find say it's like 30 feet around if you go to that tree every day and you take five whacks at that tree eventually the only thing that stands between you and success is time and space because eventually you're gonna cut that tree down if you come back every day and do the same thing so know that control your thoughts write stuff down don't ha you know don't think your goals are crazy because the things that you think are crazy are the very things that are going that are very going to be going to provide the vehicle to take you to the success i mean <laughs> you know when i was in my 20s uh, somebody had said to me oh you're going to go on to university and you're going to get a phd in in legal history i would have looked at them like they'd grow on four heads and i would have said that's not possible because in my 20s I was the epitome of Billy Joel's angry young man. I was very angry with the world, you know, and the world was a miserable place. But I was still making amends and still moving forward. I can remember in my mid-30s, I, I got up one day, I was moping around, I went in the bathroom, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, you're a good person. I like who you are. And my life changed from there on in. From there on in, it changed. I went forward. I, I found a martial arts studio. I got my head on straight. So if you believe magic happens, if you believe that good things will happen to you, if you believe that you're going to pass your road test first time, 
that will happen to you. I know it will. Uh, trust in it. You know, whatever your energy is in life, whatever your higher power is, it will happen. It will happen. And, and if you don't believe that it'll happen, look at this YouTube channel, Smart Drive Test. In four years, I've built this channel to 135,000 subscribers. And as well, I can remember saying to a friend of mine, the hand signal video. I was, I was doing the hand signal video. I was talking to Tim on Skype. And I said to him, and I can remember, this was in early, this was in the spring of, of 2016. I remember saying to him, I said, nobody will ever watch this. Nobody will ever watch this because traffic safety is not sexy. Mind you, at the same, one and the same time, in, in the early days of Smart Drive Test in 2016, I was not doing videos that you guys were looking for. I was not doing videos that my audience was looking for. It took me a few months to figure out what my audience was looking for. And once I did the Parallel Park video, how to parallel park that's what you were looking for and as soon as i did those videos then then it took off then the channel started to go forward and it started to grow and it started to accelerate and we started to build a great community so this is the message that i want to leave with you for the great holiday season the world is a magic place and whatever you think is going to be real for you if you have lofty goals and you take those five whacks at it every day, you do the things every day that you need to do, you will eventually grow that. You will eventually be successful. You will eventually get there. Believe that you can do that. Awesome, awesome, there we go. Uh, Frederick, I'm a music teacher in Denmark and somehow this channel has improved my teaching and I do have a few axes with strings on them. <laughs> That's awesome, Frederick. And you know, the other thing that I do uh, every day uh, I go on Duolingo. Both my friends, uh, both my friends, both my kids rather, are in French immersion, and they both they're fluent in speaking French. Uh, I come from Ontario, and for those of you who don't know, it's next door to Quebec. And if you go to certain parts of Ontario, it's very bilingual. If you go to Ottawa, for example, the capital, the federal capital of Canada, uh, you have to be bilingual to get a job there. Uh, and I've been, I'm currently on an 85 day streak on Duolingo. I've done it every day for. You know, I do it for about 20 minutes every day. And, eh, you know, I'm not, not literate in any stretch of the imagination, but I'm getting a lot better at French. I can actually read some of the stuff, which is great. So, every day, do what you need to do. The other book that I would recommend to you is The One Thing. Have a look at that book. If you want to go forward, meet, hit your goals, that's another book that I would suggest that you have a look at. Uh, Carrie, you do such a great job. I am grateful for your teaching and how you drive as safe as possible. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. Uh, really great. Uh, 380, I can tell what's obviously broken, but the names and tolerances are Greek to me. <laughs> I, I think I missed... Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, 380, you said you can't, you're having trouble with pre-trip inspection. I don't, why are you having trouble with pre-trip inspection? Pre-trip inspection, uh, have you, 380, have you looked at the video on the work pre-trip? Uh, because uh, that might help you out in terms of your work pre-trip there at work. Mortz, uh, your parallel park is the best. I've been practicing a different technique for a while and couldn't perfect it. I tried yours and I can do it consistently. Awesome. Duolingo is garbage. Invest in a simil. Uh, I might actually do that because yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced that Duolingo is teaching me French. <laughs> okay, three. I have a hard time with downshifting with a bobtail. How do you do that with uh, an Eaton 13 speed transmission? Uh, okay, so one of the things you're gonna do to be able to downshift a non synchronized transmission, Corey will put the video up for you on shifting theory for a non synchronized transmission. But I uh, would suggest to you, um, make sure that when you downshift, you bring the tachometer down to 1,000 RPM. That is probably first and foremost of what's going to help you the best. Because remember, in a non-synchromesh transmission, you got to slow down to gear down. So you actually got to slow the truck down first before you can gear down in the truck. All right? Oh, the other thing about Duolingo, just going back... <laughs> talking about Duolingo. I recently got access to stories in Duolingo and one of the things that actually is helping me improve my French on Duolingo is the fact that the stories, the stories are much better. 
uh, they really did improve the ability of Duolingo to kind of get French into my head. So, there you go. <clears throat> You'll never reach fluency. No, that is absolutely true. And uh, somebody said that to me the other day, uh, that if I actually wanted to get to some sort of ability to speak French and understand French, I would need to get a tutor. And actually, that's if anybody is learning a language, this is something else that you could do. Duolingo will help you, and, and I agree with that statement, that Duolingo will not get you to fluency. Uh, however you could hire a tutor and I mean this is the other amazing thing about computers <laughs> if you got an internet connection you can talk to a French speaking person who will tutor you to teach you French how magic is that you can sit in your house in your pajamas Skype with somebody and learn another language I mean how fantastic is that you know what an incredible world we live in <laughs> What an incredible world we live in. So, you know, because uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who travels a lot and she was going to Latin America and another person that she was going with, that's how they learned Spanish. They went on Duolingo, they did the work on Spanish on Duolingo, and then they hired, hired a tutor, a Spanish tutor, and they just basically did it through Skype. It just, that's magic. Magic. There you go. And CA, cheap tutors online for Italic. There you go. There's the thing. Awesome. Uh, Mohinder, I'm a French teacher. I like your personality. Uh, look good when bald. <laughs> awesome. So that's that's how you do it. You gotta you gotta wear a turban to cover the bald head. There you go. Yeah, I embrace my my baldness. But I was fortunate. I kept my hair till I was 45, and then I lost it when I was 45. So you know, I thought that was a pretty good run. Okay, uh, 380 depends on why you're downshifting. He said bobtail, but Jakes are most effective at higher RPMs. Uh, usually they work at a thousand, but not much as two thousand. Right. Oh, okay. So maybe I missed something there in terms of the downshifting. Uh, yeah. No. Eaton. Okay. Um. <clears throat> All right. So we'll we'll come back to that. I want to answer this question with uh, place adventures. How do you stop on an ice on hill? I almost had a crash. Yes. Excellent. Uh. Corey will put the video up for you, BD, on uh, top five reasons for crashes in the winter on ice. And one of the things you have to do on a hill when you're going down a hill on ice, excellent question, uh, you, you got to kind of do stab braking because if you lock the wheels up, you don't have any steering control. So you got to keep the wheels rolling. And actually in that video, top five crashes uh, in the winter, the re you see the vehicles coming down the icy hill and the only vehicle that keeps control is the bus because the bus isn't on the brakes. Uh, the bus is actually letting the tires roll and he's, he or she has some steering control. All the other vehicles come down the hill and lock up the tires and as soon as they lock up the tires they lose their steering ability. So what you got to do is you got to kind of stab braking, slow down, off the brakes, steer where you want to go, on the brakes hard, lock up release the brakes and then get a little bit more. So uh, that's how you go, okay? Uh, Prince, lost your hair when you're 15. <laughs> I feel for you, mate, I really do. Uh, I had a student when I was at the university, yeah, he had a huge dinner plate uh, when he was 18 and he just he just shaved his head after that. So yeah, there's unfortunate that they don't get to keep their hair. And actually it was, you know, <laughs> I had long hair for a long time when I was in my 30s. And the, the second time I grew it long and then cut it, I realized that in the front it was beginning to thin. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I, I really, I really seriously contemplated. I went to the drugstore. I looked at Rogaine and the other hair growing products and those types of things. And I just thought, there, there's no way uh, I can make an application of that two times a day, every day for more than a year. I just, I'm just not that committed. I wasn't that committed to keeping my so I just came to grips with the fact that I was going to lose my hair and look like my grandpa. So here we are. Uh, epic. I like watching your videos, Rick, on both car and commercial driver licenses. Uh, speaking of driver's licenses in New York and New Jersey, they both have legislation on standard licenses for undocumented learner drivers. Uh, when you say undocumented learner drivers, Epic, are you talking about uh, learner drivers that have not yet passed a learner's test or what I'm not familiar with that language what that what that means Okay, so we're wrapping up near the end here. Uh, we got Christmas on Wednesday 
uh, depending on where you are in the world. And I wish you all the very best for the holidays and that you get what you want. And remember, magic happens. Santa Claus is real. You know, we're going to have a great, great holiday season. I'll be back next week on Sunday. Uh, just look at the count at the date here real quickly. Uh, next week is the 29th. Yeah, so two days before New Year's. Awesome. And uh, we can all, excuse me, make our New Year's resolutions. Um, Tina, do you recommend uh, buying driving tests uh, besides buying your course? Now, um, Tina, are you going for a CDL license or are you going for your first license and you want to do some practice driving tests in order to get your learners? Is that what, you, is that what you're working towards, Tina? Uh, Destiny, I like watching your videos with driving tests and, and in, you're in Cleveland. Thank you so much, Destiny. That's really awesome and we're so happy that we can hear you help you out. Yeah, Tina, just let me know uh, whether you're going for a learner's test, uh, whether it's for your car or whether it's for a truck or bus license, okay? <laughs> Did we miss the 13 speed downshifting? No, we didn't miss the 13 380. So essentially what you want to do when you're downshifting, especially in a big truck, uh, when you're bobtailing, it's going to be a little bit different in, when you're bobtailing, obviously, because you don't have a trailer on. That's what bobtailing means. Uh, it's a it's a truck without a light uh, without a trailer on it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, but essentially, you know, just let the RPMs drop right off. Get on the brakes, slow it right down, 1,900 RPM, and then downshift. And you'll you only you'll find you only have to bring when you throttle up. You only got to bring the RPMs up two or 300 RPM for it to go down into the next gear. And that's for the purposes of a license. Okay, after you get your license, don't downshift. Just put your foot on the brake and come to a stop. And actually look at the downshifting video uh, there that I've got. And it basically says use the brakes because you're going to have more control than you are if you downshift. Okay. Uh, so you're going for your first license. You don't know anything about driving. Okay. So uh, what I would suggest, Tina, uh, is I have some free practice driving test questions over at the Smart Drive Test website. Go over and have a look at those. Do those tests. No. For a first license, I wouldn't recommend that you buy any of those because there's plenty of free questions uh, on the internet. You just type in free practice driving test questions. Uh, don't read the manual cover to cover. Corey will put up the video for you on getting your learner's license uh, and do the practice driving test questions. Don't use them as a test of your ability. Rather use them as a learning tool. So use the driving test questions to identify the gaps in your knowledge, the things you don't know about driving. So for example, you don't know the procedure for doing a left-hand turn, you don't know the rules for right-of-way, uh, you don't know about driving over painted islands and those types of things. So do the practice driving test questions, uh, identify the gaps in your knowledge, and then go back to the driving manual and look up in the index the bits that you need to do to fill in your, your knowledge to be able to practice the, the, uh, the, the learner's test. And once you're getting 80 to 90% consistently on the tests uh, that you're doing on the internet, <clears throat> then you're ready to go into this uh, driving test center and do your uh, learner's license test. So that's how I recommend that you go about doing that. And Corey will put the video up for you on passing your learner's test as well. And the tests are going to be uh, multiple choice, four uh, possible answers. Usually right off the bat, you can eliminate two of the solutions and then it's a matter of picking up the other two and uh, figuring out which one it is and which one's gonna be the, the, the best answer. And that comes back to the the byline that I have here in the video or the tagline that I have, which is, you know, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer, right? So do all of that, okay? There you go, how to pass a, a driver's learner's test, okay? Uh, Matt, uh, how do I stop in time for a red light if it's icy in an easy way? Okay, so Matt, uh, I can eliminate that fear right away because it's unlikely that it's going to be icy at a traffic light, okay? Most traffic lights are on major roads. Major roads are usually maintained first. Uh, they're usually salted and sanded. It's very unlikely on a road test that you're going to come up to a traffic light and it's going to be slippery at the traffic light. I'm not saying that it's not going to, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it is going to be clear. Uh, it's going to be free of ice because it's been salted and sanded and you're going to be just fine, okay? So do that. Okay, uh, yes, Tina, the Pass Your Road Test First Time course is for somebody who doesn't know anything about driving. It will give you all the information about driving. There are practice driving test questions in there that will prepare you for the learner's test. 
Uh, it will give you a, a schedule of all the topics that you need to cover for the purposes of passing your road test. Uh, the only stipulation on the course is because it's an online course, self-paced course, uh, in the seven to 10 days before you go for your road test, as part of the guarantee, uh, you need to go and take a, a mock road test, a practice driving test with a local driving school. And that's just one hour you go and work with a local driving school and they'll go out and assess your ability uh, for the test. They'll say, you know, you're ready or you need to work on these skills or those types of things. But yes, it will take you from kind of zero all the way to fully prepared for a road test is what is the course and it's $27. Uh, the $27 cars. Yeah, exactly. It's complete pass your road test first time. It'll take you right from the beginning of your learner's test all the way through to preparing you for the road test. Okay. Uh, CA, I passed in August, but I am still not confident or very good in reverse. I have nowhere in Vancouver to put up pylons and practice or any alternatives. Uh, CA, there should be lots of places there in Vancouver. You can go to a mall in the morning or at night. Uh, go to churches, those work as well. Uh, recreation centers, those types of things. Uh, all have parking lots, mall parking lots. If you go to Walmart, usually up in the back and those types of things, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, you can do your, and you, you don't even need um, to put up uh, pylon CA. The other thing you can do is if you go into a parking lot and there are light standards as there often are in parking lots, you can use those for the pylons and you can do your figure eights around the, uh, the light standards or just drive around the light standards and kind of figure out where you are in space and place. Okay. Will abroad, what is situational awareness and defensive driving? I had this question during my test, but wasn't taught. Okay. So situational awareness, that's an excellent question. Situational awareness is where am I on the roadway? All right, am I on a multi-lane city road with complex intersections? And what are the potential hazards that are particular to being on a multi-lane uh, roadway in the city at a complex intersection? Those hazards are going to be different than if you're on an, a freeway uh, out driving along, you know, on a freeway, that's going to be a different situational awareness. If you're in a residential area, it's going to be a different situational awareness. So situational awareness is knowing where you are on the road, what section of road you're on, what is the traffic, what is the weather, uh, what are other drivers doing, what is the vehicle, what are the vehicles doing. So it's situational awareness about where you are on the roadway at a particular place and space and time, and what are the potential hazards that you could encounter at that time on the roadway. All right, so that is situational awareness and it's uh, basically knowing the different hazards that are particular to a, a, a one traffic situation as opposed to a different traffic situation. All right, so that's the long and short. CA, mall cops kick you out. <laughs> well, CA, if they kick you out, then just go somewhere else, okay? Don't freak out about getting kicked out. Uh, I've been in lots of mall parking lots and they don't they don't kick me out. I mean, you can go, like I said, you can go to church, recreational centers, lots of places that have parking lots, especially if you go in in the morning. Um, and as long as you're not impeding other traffic through the parking lot, you're going to be pretty good. <laughs> and Tim made an excellent point uh, at, at Drive um, <clears throat> at Drive Smart BC there that uh, pylons don't ding your car. Yes, that is an excellent point. Uh, you know, when I was saying use light standards, yes, there is an advantage to using pylons for sure. <laughs> Uh, Mohammed, thank you, Rick. Your videos are always helpful. I'll be taking my G uh, on the 30th of this month. Awesome. Congrats. Uh, good luck on that and all the best. Epic. Uh, is it okay to stop before the two roads meet even though there's a stop line at the intersection occurs here in my area where a local residential road needs a main road? Okay. No. Generally, Epic, you want to stop at the stop line. If you're first in the queue, you want to stop at the stop line okay or at the correct position at a controlled intersection you don't want to stop back from the intersection okay excellent so i think we've answered all the questions so thank you so much for showing up thank you so much for participating all the best for the holidays magic happens magic is real and remember what comes out of your mouth is real so and it's going to happen so remember santa claus is real and you're going to have a great holiday. Okay, for how long do I get access? You can have access to the course for as long as you want. Uh, it's indefinite, Tina. 
for the course. Prince, could you check my previous comment where... Uh, Prince, 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 Prince. How do you turn when visibility is blocked by parked cars? Okay, excellent question, Prince. I'll just answer this question and then we'll move on. Uh, when there's blocked cars, you've got to go slowly, stick your nose out, just go very slowly until you can see, and when, you're, when you can see and you're sure that the way is clear, then you can go. All right, so everybody who participated, thank you so much. Everybody who's passed the road test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing. All the best with your new license and new freedom. And for those of you coming up to road test in the next couple of weeks, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.